Now, well, folks, old houses are the best. If you've got some minor skills and a lot of time, a little bit of money. What? I had to explain to my wife that I'm not talking to myself. Although talking to myself is a good way to get great advice. All right, back to the old house. I was doing some spring cleaning and I noticed this little brown stripe along my uh, shoe base here. And what this is telling me is that this landing on this staircase is sinking. There's something structurally wrong with it. It needs to be fixed before somebody falls through it. And with that in mind, I know what the base problem is. The water on the outside of this door uh, runs through because of a bad design. And you can see that it's causing some rot where it really pours down this basement wall. I'll show you this. And this is an old house, and I didn't do this, so I'm just living with it. There's my driveway, and there's a step down to the door jam. And what happens is this collects water, and the water runs under the door, down this basement wall, onto this landing, causes rot. So I've got to decide what I'm going to do first, fix this door or fix this landing. And since I'm less likely to fall through the door, I think we're going to fix the landing first. Upon closer inspection, it would appear that mostly what's holding this landing up is spider webs and friction. This is one of the supports that should be vertical, not leaning as it is. And over here in the corner where the deck is lowest, you can see that this board here is not even touching at the top and it's clearly rotted out at the bottom. So I think the first order of business is to get a broom and clean this up. Second order of business is to cut some cut some lumber and get a jack and jack this back up to where it's level. I'm not a big fan of wearing masks where they are not useful. But down here cleaning up this dirt would be a heck of a good place to wear a mask because you don't know what's in this. This house is 136 years old and God knows what's in this dust when I'm kicking up. All right, well, that's more better. Uh, most of the spider webs are gone. You can see by the dust floating around, it's still a little dusty. Uh, once again, I would encourage you, if you're cleaning up an old house like this or working on an old house like this, that you strongly consider wearing a mask. Nothing to do with COVID, but this here is rotted wood. And I don't know what kind of spores are in that. If there's mold in it, there's a good chance that somewhere along the line, a mouse died down in here. And you don't want to be breathing that in either. All right. So the next step is take a measurement from the bottom of this landing to the floor, find out how long a board I need to get to accommodate a jack and raise this back up. While I was at it, I checked this board right here. That board's in okay shape. I don't really like it. But this one right here, right there, it's loose on the bottom, which tells me that board there is probably rotted just a little bit. Um, this one right here is definitely rotted. So I'm gonna consider, well, I'll do more than consider. I'll go ahead and replace those boards while I'm doing the rest of this work. I 
I've got something I need to consider here. Is that the original support that ran from this corner up here all the way down was molded into this concrete border right here that's full of rotten wood and the reason that rotted is because wood will rot when it's surrounded by concrete the water's got no way to get out and dry out so i think my best option is to go ahead and put a four by four post right here flat on the concrete there's nothing down here that's going to knock that out but now the next consideration is that's going to put the 4x4 four four post right here between these two joists, uh, which is not going to offer it a lot of support. You do not want to put the post up here on the decking. It needs to be spanned between these two joists. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut a board to go across here. That'll need to be about 12 inches. Then I need to get a four by four post. And here's the trick here. Oh, everything's in the way. This is a really confined space. Oh, there we go. I'm looking at 30 and five eighths. I don't want to go to 30 and three quarters because that means I got to raise this up a little higher. I don't need to do that. So we just go to 35 eighths. If you don't know this, in carpentry, you round off in framing. You don't need to be really tight like in trim. All right. So I'm gonna put a two by, two by, two by six, two by eight. I got a two by eight. I'm gonna put a two by eight across there and I'm gonna lay it down on its side, which is not truly proper, but for this application, it's gonna be just fine. So I'll need to subtract an inch and a half off of that uh, so that's, uh, that's going to be 29 and a quarter that I need to make that four by four post to fit it. Mark that right there. I'm going to pull this back down and put screws through the top of this into this 4x4 so that at least the top is fastened in. The bottom is stuck into the corner here. So I don't think it's going anywhere. I'm just going to leave it stand free. This is fucking ridiculous. All right, I've had to move a few things around to get that in there. That's fine. I'm gonna put a couple of screws up through the bottom of this board. Make sure it's anchored in place. If you're doing regular carpentry, you wouldn't be using screws, but a lot of homeowners are going to these screws. They hold tighter. They're easier to use, especially in these confined spaces.
Well, that one hit some old wood there. That yeah, was pretty tight. All right. I'm gonna let the jack down and see where we're setting. the main repair. I'm going to stop there for tonight. If we didn't do anything else, this would be all right. I will go ahead and change the other wood that's starting to show rot just because I don't want to come back down here in another in another five years.